Now we have the well, let's go D11 back on the bench, and you saw in the run we cut the string because this was bouncing everywhere, and it's tantamount to useless in my opinion the way it works. So it's going to be re out a bit, a lot well, a bit better, a lot better in my opinion. I've got a few leftover parts to work with, not a lot. But it's, it seems it's going to run in a, if I run it from this point here, here, it'll be in a different position. So let's see what I can work out. Well, it didn't take much to modify. Um, I think this will pretty much work. It needs all sorting out, but I'm going to leave it like this. But it, it's one hole off, so I'm going to move the base plate over one. And then sort this out and I think I'm going to make some spacers um, to hold this uh, a little bit more central um, you know so you put the spacers on and the nuts and make it across then bolt it all together that's why like, I didn't thread lock any of this and that will take a lot of the twist out the top won't be too bad because it's there's sort of nuts either side and it's a very small movement so I'm happy with that but it seems to work okay so so that's that's that piece modded so I've got to work out on CAD some spacers and uh, print them up quick so I've just printed some 8.5 millimeter tubes with an inner size of 4.2 millimeter with an outer of 5.5 so it look quite nice but it holds it almost central but it's loose um, so that's rebuilt so This is uh, what it will look like. It's only loose at the moment, but it seems to work very well. And the bit of height is because I'm going to add material to tight to sort of make this a little bit better here. And this will run for it all. I've got a 3D printed part, but I'll get that all done and then we'll have a look at this bit complete. Now, after a little bit of mucking around, I've Converted it and now I'm going to run like this. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. Um, I also made up a piece of plastic and then covered it in wood, and there's the 3D printed plate. So I'm quite pleased with how that's come out. Um, so the next thing is we got the box of bits. Stuff I've printed off for it. And we're gonna try and mount these. So I've got to be careful because there's the there's a, a mounting hole in each corner. So if it mounts there, if not, I've got to go one further in. Um, I've got screws on order because I just cannot pick up screws anywhere for what I require. So that is a pain. Now, here's the uh, 3D printed stone look corner posts, all being fitted, they fit round nice. Um, I've actually just screwed them on. What I did was, I put a little bit of tape and ran a line on, on the tape from corner to corner to give me a centre. I then run it in with um, my little pin drill with a 1.5 mil drill to just uh, just get the hole going um, 
and then once the hole either just through it or the hole just through um, I've set up a 2.5 millimeter drill in the drill press and drilled all the way through into the chamber of where the fence goes and then I run in um, a 3 millimeter stainless steel screw the thing was the screws too long so what I did was I made a spacer and this spacer just about holds it, it screws in the correct distance into into the posts and then because the holes are like 4.3 millimeters there is actually I don't know if you can see it there's a little flange that um, I added to the tube um, so it, it centralizes on the hole really nice and so the posts are actually exactly in the center of and then all I did with I did with the fence sections is worked out what was required side cutted the parts off um, these are the roughly the same length on the side these are the same length on the side so they're easy it's just two longer ones here which are a bit more free free moving but they won't, they don't really move but probably with a dab of super glue it will hold them solid now everything's been pre undercoated with a coat of uh, Miles Black by Studio Acrylics well of course Studio Acrylics by uh, Pebio or whatever that is um, mixed up a simple grey uh, using um, the jam tart dish as a mixing tray which works perfectly and now we start dry brushing so I'm going to line up on one but you'll only see one painted because I won't film all of them because it'll be intensely boring but you should see the coats go on There's the finished item. I went with a white sort of flagstone on top where it says it's been painted and on the bottom just to give it a bit of contrast. It's artistic license when you do something like this but it just makes it, it just breaks up the grey. So now we start on the panel, the, pa uh, the picket fence. So let's get on with these. Now it's a case of just reassembly, reassembling. There's the wood, how I done it. And it's just getting them all to fit together. It's not too hard because most of them are sort of set in their sizes. So it's not that hard to work out. You 
just sort of take your time and add the parts and you'll see it definitely when it's complete now. Well, there's all the fencing added and this part of the diorama is almost finished. Maybe add a couple of other bits later on. Not decided yet, but the walls are in. And um, I think it looks a lot better. Um, the, uh, the next stage probably will be... Um, adding it to the baseboard I'm just waiting for the screws to arrive so I can do that and uh, the baseboard is made made out of a composite pine shelf you may have to see it properly because it's like <laughs> that's wide isn't it yeah I made out a composite cut it down to size rounded the corners rounded the edges and like I said it's been done in antique pine so that will look really good once it's mounted on there and then we can start adding the next section which will proceed to the left here but this is um, this stage sort of finished <laughs> 